Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff for this episode. Um, I don't have it linked up in the show notes, but I just wanted to provide a little bit of commentary on uh, the Apple event that happened on Tuesday. So we're recording this Friday, October 25th. Uh, The show that I put out that evening, Tuesday evening, I didn't have enough time to really uh, digest and formulate what I wanted to say about the event, but uh, it's been a couple of days since. And so, um, you know, a lot of it was uh, kind of expected Mavericks, you know, they gave another run through of Mavericks. They didn't, nothing major really changed from the last preview that they uh, gave, which isn't really a big surprise. They've basically just been using this time to, to update it. The one thing that was kind of a surprise out of all of it was they made the update free. So if you have at least Snow Leopard and a 64-bit late 2007 Mac, could be a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, an iMac, doesn't really matter as long as it's a 64-bit machine from what I can gather, which is you know really late 2007 machines. Uh, as long as you have that, then you you can update to Mavericks. Um, great boost in battery life. Mavericks does a beautiful, wonderful job of, of, you know, all around boosts. Um, I did upgrade to Mavericks yesterday and, uh, through the course of reinstalling a bunch of my homebrew stuff, which many of you may or may not be aware of this, but I actually use a fair amount of, uh, open source software behind the scenes to produce the show, uh, namely lame and, uh, Vorbis tools and FFmpeg. But, um, uh, you know, it's all on OS 10. So, you know, I use homebrew to, uh, ins- to, to manage all that. And so after the upgrade, I went through and just kind of did a reinstall of all of my uh, homebrew stuff just so that I had, you know, a, a, a version compiled that I knew would work with the homebrew only to discover that, uh, <laughs> Vorbis tools, the formula in homebrew for Vorbis tools required a uh, flack, which did not compile correctly uh, under Mavericks. It's, it's since been fixed, but, um, had a little bit of a head scratching and head bang in there for a little bit, trying to, uh, get it to, to correctly compile, uh, for Mavericks. Um, anyway, so that was really the only major problem that I've had with Mavericks. All my software otherwise works. Uh, Apple also updated, uh, iLife and iWork suite, both of which are free as well. So if you're, if you already own iLife or iWorks, you know, go to the app store after you upgrade to Mavericks and those updates are free. Uh, it, they're also free with purchase of a new, um, uh, with new, new hardware. So, uh, pretty nice. Um, Apple released uh, new iPads. Uh, the iPad mini now has a retina display, the same resolution as uh, the larger iPad, which is now called the iPad Air. Both uh, have a resolution of 2048 by 1536, basically in film parlance, 2K horizontal resolution. So pretty nice. Um, they both have the 64-bit A7 uh, processor. Basically, it's an iPhone 5S, but with a larger screen and uh uh, more, more display and more battery life. So, uh, the thing that I find interesting is instead of the, the original 9.7 inch iPad, just being called the new iPad, it's now called the iPad air and, uh, pretty interesting that I kind of suspect since they've been pushing the, uh, new 64 bit architecture on the arm processors that, that they've been using, I kind of suspect a, a larger, more powerful, a la 13-inch iPad uh, will be uh, coming about in the not-too-distant future, um, you know, and they'll call it the iPad Pro, and it'll be aimed more at productivity, something kind of along the lines of uh, what you see with Microsoft's uh, Surface Pro 2, uh, where the keyboard, you know, it's an iPad and keyboard combo. The keyboard kind of folds up and is part of the cover for the uh, tablet 
not iPad, but it's a tablet keyboard combo. Uh, you know, I can totally see Apple doing something like that where they keep the same 2048 by 1536 res, but in, but make it a 13 inch display that I can totally see happening uh, and have like a keyboard trackpad or some, you know, some combination of something that's detachable. So if you just want the tablet, you can do that, but it has more RAM, way more storage and just faster in general. So, um, should be pretty interesting. I'm curious to see, uh, what comes of that, uh, otherwise pretty neat. Um, you know, and that's really, you know, the iPads were the star of the show. Uh, you know, there's a new Mavericks. If you're a Mac user, that's a halfway re recent Mac. Guess what? Uh, you can, uh, you can get Mavericks for free and, um, you know, go check it out. The, like I said, they, they have a video online. Uh, if you go to Apple's website over at apple.com, they have a, a video of the keynote. You can watch it and it's pretty neat. Okay. Uh, speaking of Apple, uh, Tesla has hired Apple's VP of product design for new vehicle development. Um, that's interesting. Tesla has hired uh, Apple VP product design Doug Feld. A press release on the automaker's website reveals that Doug will soon leave t Apple for Tesla. So should be pretty interesting. I'm curious to see uh, what comes of that. Um, a secondary Apple-related story over at Mashable. Analysts a bigger, uh, more powerful iPad Pros on the horizon. I kind of touched on that a little bit um, uh, uh, in my commentary i did just a second ago definitely check this out uh this is quite a bit more in depth than what i could do and um let's see i think i had did i have one more i don't okay so uh anyway pretty interesting uh in secondary news google's latest data center may be floating in san francisco bay over at read write web a sleuthing uh, cnet's daniel turdeman strongly suggests that google's next data center is going down to sea to the sea in ships um pretty interesting so google he starts off here google may be uh, building a secret data center on a barge currently floating in san francisco bay uh if true, it would represent the internet giant's latest attempt to translate some of its more far-fetched ideas, in this case, for an environmentally friendly sea-powered and most likely sea-cooled data center into reality. Um, what we really know, other than circumstantial evidence, is that it's some kind of massive, some kind of massive project is taking place, shape within a four-story tall structure on a barge moored at Treasure Island, midway between San Francisco and Oakland. Um, pretty interesting. Definitely, uh, curious to see what comes of this, uh, should be pretty cool over at gadget.com LG FireWeb Firefox OS phone is coming to Brazil. That's right. LG has unveiled its first smartphone that runs on Firefox OS. The LG FireWeb joins the likes of the ZTE open and Alcatel one touch fire as the few and proud gadgets that run on the HTML5 based operating system from the Mozilla Foundation. So it's being uh, shipped to Brazil initially with local carrier Telefonica, uh, retailing this and the One Touch Fire in the country. They also plan on uh, rolling out the Firefox phone soon to Mexico, Peru, and Uruguay. Well, I can't pronounce worth a darn tonight. So. Pretty interesting. Definitely check it out, especially if you're in those countries. Over at MakeSign, we've got a couple of MakeSign uh, stories here. Get your copy of the Arduino family tree. Microprocessors and prototyping boards are nothing new. What is new is the proliferation of low-cost, maker-friendly boards. And Arduino is arguably the one that started it all. Since it was conceived by a group of students in Italy's Interaction Design Institute in 2005, Arduinos have been embraced by artists and makers and gone on to spur an exploding ecosystem of easy to use open source boards. So the just released volume 36 of make delves into the world of boards and includes a detailed photo illustration of the evolution of the Arduino. Pick up a copy of the magazine to see it uh, if for yourself or download the poster here. So pretty neat. Definitely check this out. Uh, also, uh, in relation to volume 36, there's a secondary project, Makes Illustrated Board Glossary. 
Um, they basically have a layout of uh, your typical Arduino board and what the various parts and pieces are. Definitely take a look at that if you're interested in doing any Arduino development. You know, all it takes is a little one of these, and you can actually buy these little guys at Radio Shack now. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, this one, this particular one is an Arduino Uno. I'm actually looking at uh, picking up an Arduino Yun. Um, I've got a potential move to another house coming up in a couple of weeks, so it won't happen until after that, but still pretty awesome. From uh, TechCrunch.com, Willow Garage spinoff brings the UBR1 mobile robotics research platform out of stealth. Unbounded Robotics has come out of stealth as the latest and uh, latest spin from open source robotics maker and incubator Willow Garage, who created the PR2 robotics research and development platform and was itself set up with a vision to make autonomous personal robots. That mission provided a little tougher than founder Scott Hassan originally thought when he set it up back in 2006. So the robot that they have here looks pretty cool. Definitely check it out. You know, how can you go wrong? That will do it for this episode of The Geekinator. Please do subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.